Hi everyone, I'm Dan Freed, creator of Biochemistry Literacy for Kids. This is a tutorial video introducing MoleView, which is a free web-based molecular modeling software that is great for anyone, but especially students who don't have access to either a model kit or PyMole. It actually fills in some of the gaps that you're going to definitely have if you don't have either of those two things. Also, for students who do have PyMole and a model kit, there are some special features that I would definitely recommend everyone check out. Let's look at how to get started with MoleView. So once you open MoleView, you're going to see this split screen. On the left side, you're going to see an organic chemistry drawing picture of caffeine. On the right side, we have this 3D PyMole-like structure of caffeine. One thing that you'll notice, and this is a little bit of a problem with MoleView, is that the orientation of the molecule on the left isn't always the same as on the right. You'll notice that the big six-membered ring is on the left side of the molecule, and here we have the five-membered ring on the left side. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this around so that we can uh, see what we're looking at here, and it makes a little bit more sense. I'm going to flip it like this, uh, just with our mouse. You're going to just click and hold with the mouse, and now that's a little bit better. Now you can compare the two structures. I'm going to use two fingers on the mouse to kind of zoom us up a little bit, so it's more of the same size. And then that's a really useful thing to have, to have the drawing on the left side, and then the uh, 3D structure on the right side. So let's get started and build our own structure in MoleView and then we're going to render it in 3D, which is the whole purpose of why we're adding this to the program. To erase the caffeine, because we may not always want to look at caffeine, go over to the little garbage can here, just click it. That clears our screen and we're ready to uh, draw a new structure. On the left side here, you're going to see all different kinds of bonds. You can build a single bond. Let's build a single bond maybe uh, just up and down, a couple single bonds like this. I'm just clicking and holding, looking where the, the little green highlighted piece is. That's going to help us see where we are uh, making our drawing. There's our double bond. Let's add a double bond right here. Let's put a triple bond uh, maybe over here. So that's how we add the bonds. If we're interested in stereochemistry, we can use these wedges. All right. When we get to the uh, stereochemistry chapters, you'll understand what those are. But those are basically just single bonds, but they have to do with whether the bond is coming towards us or away from us. The solid wedge means it's coming towards us, and the, the dotted wedge means it's away. I'm going to use my mouse to zoom up a little bit. We can also hit this button to zoom closer. That's another uh, way of, of zooming in so we can see what we're doing here. So now you can see our double bond, triple bond, our stereochemistry. Let's go ahead and add a little benzene ring to this thing. Let's maybe put a little benzene ring right here. So it's kind of a, I think it's pretty intuitive how this works. And like I said, uh, this is a free version of what are typically much more expensive molecular drawing software. So the one that I use to create the drawings for biochemistry literacy is called ChemDraw, and it's extremely expensive. It's prohibitively expensive for uh, my users to be uh, using, but this is a free alternative. And it does have a, a few you know, little uh, kinks here and there, but for the most part, it's going to be really great for you guys to use. All right, so I'm just kind of making a creative structure. I'm just kind of adding some things on here. And um, we're, we can also add different kinds of atoms. So maybe we want uh, an amine over here. We can put our nitrogen, and then we need some hydrogens, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click single bond, and I'm going to click H. And now whenever I add a single bond, there's going to be a little H at the end. Hmm, that's nice. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with an oxygen. Let's add this, and we're going to add an oxygen at the end. And then we're going to go back and click the H. That adds an H to the end. So now we have a little alcohol, a little OH group there. So that's how you basically how you uh, add atoms to this. If we click this, I'm not going to do it right now, but if you click this, you get the whole periodic table and you can put any atom you want. Um, not super useful for us uh, for this program because most of the atoms we use are already right here. We don't typically need uh, you know, uranium or something, so don't worry, wor worry about that too much. But that's the basic idea of drawing. Um, there's a couple other things to know about. We can also add charges. So if we're interested in drawing amino acids, let's kind of we'll start over. Actually, before we start over, let's go ahead and render this in 3D just to have a variety of things here. Once you've made this drawing, and it's great to draw, it's great to practice drawing, learn how to professionally draw things, we're going to go ahead and click 2D to 3D, and that's going to get rid of our caffeine. And it's going to give us, this. it gives us these error messages, I'm not really sure why, but it's going to uh, give us a 3D version, and, and usually fairly accurate version, of the molecule that we just drew. So look how 3D this is. It's really cool. We see that benzene ring. And again, the orientation isn't right, so I'm going to flip it over. This is a little bit better. 
we can see that we have our benzene ring, our, um, our, our uh, ring over here, that's the benzene ring, same thing. And then we also have our little cyclopropane ring, which is this triangle here. That's the same triangle as over there. We have our triple bond, our double bond, you know, all the different things we put in there, we can see in our cool 3D structure. So this is a great alternative. If you don't have the model kit, it allows you to at least get, get somewhere, have some kind of representation. May not be perfect, but it will at least be better than nothing so that you can see a 3D model. Now there is one flaw that I see, and, and this is a problem with, with uh, MolView and probably some of the other free drawing programs. The geometry on this carbon right here is not good. You can tell that because see how it's very flat? It's very flat there. If you built a model for that, you wouldn't have a flat uh, geometry there. It would have to be much more tetrahedral. So there are gonna be a few little things that aren't quite right with it. Uh, so just keep an eye out for that. But for, you know, for, for a beginning user, it's, it's really gonna be fine. You'll get, you'll get most of the way there. And if you're building simple molecules, you usually won't have any problems. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start over again. I'm gonna clear this. And I'm gonna go ahead and build an amino acid and I wanna show the ability uh, for charge here. So let's go ahead and, uh, we'll just build a glycine or something uh, at first. So again, select the single bond. We're going to put a few atom, a uh, few, few uh, connections here. I'm gonna go ahead and, well, we'll build an alanine maybe. And I'm gonna click this to get us a little bit closer. And let's go ahead and fill out our different atoms that are part of our alanine. So our alanine has nitrogens in it, has a nitrogen on the left side. It has a double bonded carbon over there. We need one more single bond. And then let's fill in our oxygen. So there's, this is the carboxylic acid over there. And uh, that's it. We need some hydrogens on our nitrogen, right? Because of our four, three, two, one rule, we, need, we can't just have a single nitrogen like that. So I'm gonna hit the hydrogen, hit the single bond, and I'm gonna put in uh, three bonds because actually we're gonna be drawing the positive charged version of nitrogen. And when you get to the amino acid chapter, you'll learn all about that. We're also gonna be dealing with the negatively charged oxygen. So this is a little bit more advanced than the very first two lessons. Uh, this is something we learn more about later, how we can have different numbers of bonds on certain elements because of acid-base chemistry. So let's say we wanted to, oh, I forgot the hydrogens. Let's put our hydrogens on here, H, H, H. Those are gonna be carbons unless you, unless you selected the hydrogen there. And, uh, oh, one other thing I wanted to show you. See this thing here, C to H? That's gonna fill in all the hydrogens. So we kind of make a big deal about it in, I think, uh, chapter, unit, unit uh, five, where we, we look at the professional drawing style of organic chemistry, where we leave out a lot of stuff. It's like, we kind of assume that you know that there's carbons and we assume that you know there's hydrogens here. But when you click this button, it gives us the kind of simple, simpler version, kind of like I show you in those animations, shows you where all the carbons are, shows you where all the hydrogens are. So that can be useful for people in the beginning to reveal you know, what's really behind the professional drawing. Uh, okay, so that's it. We need to show the charges. You maybe want to practice the charges. Let's put the, um, the positive charge there the negative charge there. If you need to get rid of the charges, you're gonna just um, do some like addition basically. Let's add the plus plus, it goes away. We don't really do this, but you could have a positive charge oxygen, okay? You could have a doubly charged. So if you, you know, the more you click this, the more charges change. But that's the one we need uh, right there. If you wanna draw this very good, very properly, you can put the stereochemistry in. So that's a technically a nicely drawn alanine. You may wanna like capture that image if you wanna keep track of these or draw them. You could probably do a screenshot uh, and, and capture that alanine so that you can maybe collect all your amino acids. Let's go ahead and see what happens when we do the, th uh, the 2D to 3D. So this might be what you would do if you don't have a model kit to build with our alanines. All right, so let's see what MolView did for us, okay? Um, just like I said before, it's better than nothing, but it does do a little bit of things that aren't super quite right. The one problem that it does is it doesn't seem to know about the stereochemistry very well. It's actually given us the reverse stereochem. So instead of the um, L amino acid, this has given us the R amino acid. So unfortunately, I don't know how to fix this. If someone can figure out how to get it to do the correct stereochemistry, um, please let me know and we'll, we'll make a note of it. But um, 
you know, like I said, it's better than nothing. So for, for a beginning student, at least you have a model. I mean, that's why I said it's always better to have a model kit, but some people just can't have a model kit. Um, some people can't have Pymol, so this is at least better than not having anything. So the only problem with this is where we have the wrong stereochemistry here. But um, other than that, it's really fine. We have the three, three uh, hydrogens on our nitrogen. Everything else looks just fine. Let's go ahead and build this out a little bit more, just for fun. Let's turn this into maybe a threonine or something. So we're gonna do oxygen. This is gonna be the, the threonine, we'll put another hydrogen here. Okay, so now we've turned our alanine into a threonine, right? Uh, the sterochem is this, I believe, that's the correct sterochem. And then let's, um, let's do the, look at where the hydrogens are. Okay, that's cool, just see that. And let's do 2D the 3D and see what it does. And now we have made a threonine for ourselves. Let's, let's orient it correctly. And again, it's giving me the, the, uh, the wrong stereochem, the wrong uh, isomer, I don't know why. But um, it's still, okay, it's, the, it's a threonine, okay. It's the wrong threonine, but that's all right. So, um, so that's how you build amino acids. Again, two fingers uh, zooms in and out on this picture. Same thing here, we can make this bigger, smaller. So those are some of the important drawing features of MoleView. There is also an amazing feature that PyMol doesn't have that we're gonna check out right now. If you go to this JMol menu, you're gonna be able to see some really cool things that to do. This MEP is particularly interesting. This is the molecular electrostatic potential surface. And now what that means, electrostatic potential, is having to do with the charge that shows up on the surface in the different areas of the molecule. So areas that are very negatively charged, that are rich in a lone pair electrons, for example, those are gonna have a red color. Areas that um, don't have a lot of charge to them that are maybe nonpolar or positive charge are going to be a blue color. So I'm going to show you what will show up here when we get that. Now this is super cool to see this. This is actually very, very useful for chemists to look at the properties of a molecule. So what we see here, the, um, the carboxylate and then the alcohol parts are rendered in red. So we can see there's a lot of uh, electron density, a lot of lone pair electrons over there. And then the blue parts, which is where the ammonium and then this methyl group are, these are blue because there's actually not a lot of electron density there. So, you know, you can probably see this without this electro, uh, electropotential uh, surface, but it's still kind of really cool to see that. There's two different versions of it. There's a, an opaque version and a translucent version. So this is very cool. A lot of organic chemistry books will show you things like this. So this is really cool. This can help you give you give clues about where hydrogen bonding will occur. Hydrogen bonding will occur between blue and red regions, basically, between different molecules. So that's really cool. If you want to turn that off, you go ahead and uh, hit clean. There's other things we can look at. We can look at the, the overall dipole, um, energy minimization, which may um, help to minimize the, the, um, any kind of strain that's in your molecules. So see how it's kind of shaking and shuddering a little bit? That's because it's doing some energy minimization. And uh, we do have a, another video using Pymol that's all about energy minimization where we build that creative amino acid. We do that at the end. So that's something to know about also. If your structure kind of looks a little bit crazy, um, maybe you need to do some energy minimization. So I'm gonna uh, probably turn that off there. Other things that we can do, we can change what the model looks like. We can change it from ball and stick to uh, just like these, these uh, kind of bigger sticks. We can look at the, there's this little thing here. It's the cleanup feature. This is going to kind of make the molecule look a little bit better if you've done a lot of overlapping bonds or you've kind of gone a little crazy with how you draw your bonds. You may need to use this feature. It's kind of like a spell check and it kind of reorients it. I didn't need to do it here and actually here it makes it worse, honestly, but uh, you may want to use that if your structure gets a little bit wild. That's the cleanup feature. All right, so anyway, what we're, oh, by the way, also erasing. Uh, you can also erase things. Okay, so there's, you know, it's kind of intuitive. It's kind of like a, a paint sort of program, but for molecules. So what I want to do now, so we're going to erase everything. I want to show you the really powerful part of MolView, which is great, especially if you don't have models. And even if you do have models, if you can, you can look at th anything you want. It's really amazing. We can search for things. And PyMol doesn't do this. You can do it manually in PyMol, but this program uses the cloud to uh, store I don't know how many structures, enormous amount of structures. Let's say you're just doing chapter one and you want to look at methane. You don't have a model kit or pymol, but you want to look at methane. Methane will just show up here for you. So there's our methane. We can show the, um, the hydrogens. And so we have a drawing of methane and we have our 3D molecule of methane. Okay, what else can we do? Let's look up some more complicated molecules. Let's look up chlorophyll. Let's see what, what comes up. 
with chlorophyll, okay? Let's do chlorophyll A. We get a giant structure, your very own chlorophyll. Look at that. So that's something that most students would not really be able to build because we would need a lot of model kits for that. But that is uh, chlorophyll. It's got a very heme-like uh, top to it, and it has a very hydrophobic uh, carbon-rich tail. It's also called an, I should call it an isoprene tail. So there's our, our structure of chlorophyll, and you can kind of zoom up to it and figure out how to get, you know, move it around. The one kind of little error that it makes again, see this little thing here? That's supposed to be a magnesium, and that's supposed to be in the ring here. We can see it better over here. See how there's actually supposed to be a magnesium inside the chlorine ring? Oops, I just erased it. <laughs> there's a little magnesium. So I don't know why, but the, the, the magnesium is not where it's supposed to be. So like I said, it's a free program. You get what you get with it. But um, there may be some way to fix that. I'm really not sure. But uh, I've, I've noticed that kind of, that kind of a problem with it. But uh, this is really cool. If you want to just, you can maybe change, you can, you know, obviously you can change this, put a phosphorus here or something silly like that. So you can use this as a beginning for, for drawing things. Uh, let's see what else we can do. We can look at maybe a protein even. Let's try out myoglobin. Myoglobin. Everything's in here. It's amazing. There's our myoglobin. So this is uh, one of the molecules that we uh, are studying. Uh, we're studying hemoglobin a lot in the course. Hemoglobin keeps coming back in many of the le le lessons. So myoglobin is a little, a smaller version of hemoglobin. And we can see our heme. So yeah, so first lesson, if you don't have pymol, if you don't have a model kit, we can still get something out of looking at 3D, 3D molecules. And we can see the, the heme in there. And we can see the alpha helix. There's a little uh, sulfate group here, which actually doesn't do anything. The reason it's there is because the crystal structure that the mole view is drawing on has this just random molecule sitting there. It doesn't do anything biologically, but it's just kind of taking information that it's, it's getting from the uh, crystal structure database. Okay, I hope that you found that tutorial interesting and that it inspired you to begin using mole view to draw and render molecules in 3D, even if you have a model kit or Pymol. It's a great uh, resource to have, especially since you can draw on this uh, cloud-based uh, database to load all kinds of structures and easily view them. Thank you.